Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about things that we feel are of interest to you in this community, and today will be no different. Our conversation today will center around a topic that many people are concerned about in one form or fashion, and many people are addressing through local community initiatives and various programs. I'm going to be talking today about the state of fatherhood in our society and some of the challenges that are being placed upon young people today in the absence of fathers sometimes, and then what difference does it make for fathers to be involved in the lives of their children. I'm talking today with L.C. Smith. He is the executive director of Our Fathers Mad, which is an acronym for Real Fathers Making a Difference. Welcome back to our broadcast. Thank you, sir. So good to have you today. Glad Melvin. To be here again. All right, great. Melvin Poplar's here today. And uh, Melvin, you were the first recipient of a tremendous honor that was awarded you by the Our Fathers Mad Group. That was 2016 Father of the Year. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's good to have both of you. I just want to share a few statistics as we start our conversation today, which is going to be a little more sober than many conversations that we have, but no less informative because it's certainly one of those issues that a lot of people are talking about today. And in many ways, LC, it's the reason for the existence of your organization, which happens to be a nonprofit addressing the issue of fatherhood. As supported by data across the land, children from fatherless homes are more likely to be poor and living in poverty, become involved in drug and alcohol abuse, drop out of school and suffer from health and emotional problems. Boys are more likely to become involved in crime and girls are more likely to become pregnant as teens. These are all consequences of living in a home without a father. And before we get too far down the road, I don't want to simply imply that Having a father in the home is a guarantee that everything's going to work out well because as a mental health professional, right. I know that's not true. That's right. But we also know that there is perhaps in many instances a far greater opportunity to create balance in the life of a young person when there is a healthy relationship with the father in the home. When you hear these statistics, LC, and all the work that you do with all the young guys that you work with, what are some of the pressures that are being brought to bear in their lives today? as a result of not having a father in the home? Oh man, there's so many. Um, even outside the youth who I deal with, just I have people reach out to me in the community. I mean, even adults, you know. Um, it's, the impact of a father is much greater than I think that people even realize, just the presence of a father. Um, just simple things, you know, uh, learning to do things. You know, there's, there's certain things. I go on trips to some of these guys and uh, you got one who's trying to shave for the first time with water. You know, who, who is it that you learn that, those things from? You know, mom does not even think about those things. There's so many things that they're, they're missing out on, small, simple things that we don't even think about, um, that my children wouldn't think about because I'm involved. Uh, when it comes to just behavior and being respectful, you know, sometimes it takes a father just to, to be there to say, hey, you know, that's not how you speak to your mom, you know. Um, all those stats, uh, I, I can I can see it, you know, and that's where we're coming in to try to, we're not trying to be father, and I tell people we're not a big brother program either, you know, because we are a program that's trying to instill the things that we would instill into our children to be sure that they're great to where they have a better chance to finish school, you know, and to not have a felony and to respect women and not have kids, you know, before their time. So. Uh, it's, it's so much in that, um, just ball, just a ball game, yeah. you know, just a ball game. Yeah. Melvin, you hear some of these uh, statistics and no doubt you've had that experience in terms of your awareness of these kinds of challenges and issues. You're the father of six children. I know three are boys. Are there other boys? Yeah, it's, uh, four boys. My oldest son is, he's 18 now. All right. Um, he's the oldest and I have two daughters in the middle and then the three, three younger ones. And, uh. Yeah, it's constantly a, uh, you know, you turn on the news or, or any social outlet and it's, it's a constant reminder of, of uh, fathers needing to be in their place. Yeah. How have you approached it as a father? Because, again, you took on three additional boys through adoption mm -hmm. after having three children of your own and then moving forward knowing that there would be lots of challenges yes. in society as it related to raising them in a proper way. Um, what, how do you approach that whole process? 
honestly, I think it's a, uh, it's it's more of a total approach than than uh, one. Uh, me, I was started with with the Word of God as as my basis. Then I would I would uh, try and combat those things that they will face. So uh, a lot of the negative pressure that they have as children these days, you want to you want to combat that with uh, uh, words of wisdom. I, I, I mean, as, I guess that's the way to put Regular it. Regular conversations. And, uh, and, and honestly, some, some tough talks, discipline, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of problems could be solved with just, just, just yeah. consistent discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a specific take on discipline? Because that's, of course, a hot topic in society today. People talk about spanking versus not spanking. Some people only see spanking as the type of discipline. And I always try to say to people, discipline should be a very expansive thing because all children don't respond to the same form of discipline, but all children need discipline. So how do you all approach the whole notion of discipline? And uh, you, I was going to say that, you know, it, it depends on the individual. It depends on, you know, it depends on the child. You know, I grew up, you know, getting spankings and getting whoopings. Yeah, me too. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> We're and, old school, and, man. And it was a time where where I 100% believed in spanking and whooping because it's almost something that I, you know, I learned. Instinctively, you know, yeah, right. it was there. Um, but one thing I've learned by dealing with other people, kids, and when you have a youth program and you're a significant part of their lives, you know, I don't have the authority. I, I take that back. Some of the parents would give me authority to whip their children. <laughs> I would not accept that authority. Right. So um, I've learned other ways, you know, to to um, to try to discipline, even when it comes to dealing with my own children. You know, uh, you have to do something that's effective. You know, whipping, if it does not work, you stop whipping. And that was actually my take. Uh, it was no more spankings because spankings didn't work for this young man. You know, so to stay that away because now it's almost like, you know, you feel like that you're only, maybe it's abusive or something because they're not being responsive, so why are you doing it? You know, the goal is to try to find a way, to find an effective way in order for them to be able to do the things that we know that they're supposed to do. Yeah, you're trying to bring about behavior change. Right. That's right. Yeah. right. That's right. So if, if the spanking's not working, maybe it's, in this society today, maybe it's a suspension of, uh, some type of activity that right. they're engaged yes. in or some type of technology device that they love and are part of or some club or organization as they get older that yes. they're participating in. Got all these little ideas and ways. You know, we, of course, cannot overlook the challenges today with African-American males and community policing and, and some of the fears and apprehensions that people have. Have you all had the talk? You know, we talk about that whole concept of fathers oh, yeah. having the talk with their kids. And perhaps there are maybe a few people out there that don't know what we're talking about, but it'd be hard to imagine somebody would. But this is just that conversation of, of, of parents with right. African-American children saying, listen, yeah. son, you know, you've got to be mindful about X, Y, Z while you're out there. Here's some do's and some don'ts and some rights and some wrongs. Have you guys had to talk with your boys? Yeah, I, um, de I definitely have had to talk uh, with my boys, and even within my youth program, I've actually, uh, I've had to talk with them as a group. I brought, I brought in House of Police Department uh, several times to come speak to the young men and learn what the protocol is here, you know, to be sure they're safe. But uh, we was kind of laughing about it because we, just Thursday, uh, they hosted an event that would save our sons. And yeah. that was one of the questions was, have okay. you had to have talk? Have you had to talk? Tell uh, me about it. Oops. Okay, well, Save Our Sons is, is something that we started um, where uh, we're, we're having a talk of where, where, we, where we are, where we have been, and where we're going, and how we can get there as a community of believers. So it's all based on the community, and we have community leaders come in, a lot of uh, men to share you know, some of their experiences. Uh, at this particular meeting, we had a state trooper, we had, uh, we had uh, pastors, we had um, just a, a really big turnout. And it, it has been awesome. So now we're going to continue that dialogue because that's what it was. It was, it was, it was, all, it was a lot of races there, black, white, uh, people. We needed to talk to one another. So it was, it's more of a community effort because uh, you can't just have just, uh, we can have our talk with our children, but 
if they don't see all the perspectives and they're not, it's not circumspectly, you know, where you're seeing all opinions, then you don't have a clear view of, of the whole picture. And that's, that's basically what Save Our Sons is. And, and we started that, uh, my wife and, and her friend, and we just been kind of doing that. And, and on that, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. So we have Save Our Sons for police, you know, interaction. I, two years ago we had one, and it was on pullover etiquette, you know, what not to do. Because all we want you to do is come home safe. As my child, I want you to get home safe. It's not time to be voicing whether or not you was right. I just want you to say yes, sir, and get home safe because you're my child and I love you. You know, and, and that was the whole thing about saving our son. So, yes, we definitely had that talk several times. And with the younger, with the younger ones, it's, on, it's a different type of thing, just learning to respect authority. And I think that comes at home. I mean, I, I go into the prisons and minister, and, you know, we always tell our children, you know, if correction is good, because if we don't correct you, then society will, right. and you'll be in a correctional facility. And yeah. so we want to curb sure. that younger, so. Yeah. You know, there's this, um, there's obviously part of our conversation, a, a kind of a micro conversation, perhaps, that involves a percentage of young people in our community who are perhaps fatherless or living in the press conditions as far as, or disadvantaged conditions as far as their home life is concerned. And they, are, they seek solutions to their challenges in ways that might not be ways that we might suggest to them. So they don't necessarily embrace what we might have to say with regards to here's the solution. Mm -hmm. They may say, well, hey, I'm, you know, the street, street moves with the street, right. you know, and I gotta do what I gotta do. And, um, how do you reach young people today who seem to have, in many instances, become so detached from other people's realities? I'm not saying their situation is not real. They're dealing with some very, very challenging situations. But how do we reach them? Because, you know, I walk into a room and I think we've all probably had the experience of working with young people. And it's not an easy population to reach, first of all. Right. Um, you got to be real, you got to be relational, and I think that you got to be transparent. Right. And those are all key components. But beyond that, um, I also know, you know, I'm college educated, I have some measure of success, I have an intact family, you know. Some of the experiences I don't have a clue about. I can't even begin to imagine what they're dealing with. So right. how do you reach people who perhaps may be in situations that they've determined to be, hey, you ain't got nothing to say to me, you can't reach me. Well. They are reachable. The, the problem is that a lot of people are not willing to be consistent. They are, they're willing to give you a chance, but at the same time, they're not. You have to understand, they have people who are supposed to be in their lives, who are supposed to be committed to them, and they chose not to be. So as if, if, if dad bailed out on me, why should this man try to support me? And they have a difficult time trusting that because they have a fear, you know, even if it's unknowingly that this person is going, not going to be consistent. He's not going to keep his word. You know, I hear so many times, you know, he say he's going to come pick me up or he say he's going to come to the game or, you know, he missed my birthday or he say he's going to do this or he's going to buy me this and he never did. And it's the same old, same old. Same old, same old. So yeah. why would L.C. Smith invest in me and what would make him keep his word? So you have to... Within the organization, that's why I tell you a lot of times, we're more than a mentoring program. We're really an organization of substance. Not only just the, the seeds that we plant, but we're there. You know, we go to the schools and talk to teachers. You know, we're at the ball games. You know, we go to baptisms. You know, we- In the homes. We, we're there and we're helping with the families. Yeah. And they see that. And then they begin to respond because they realize that this guy is consistently here. And you have to let them know that I'm gonna be here. I can show you more than I can tell you, because they don't care the things that come out of your mouth. And eventually they, they begin to respond. And it's a, it can be a process. Yeah. So I encourage anyone, if you have these adult males and you have younger males, you know, that's in, uh, in your families or friends, invest in them. You know, um, take your, your nephew, you know, under your wing and just check on them, you know, be consistent. And those things can be the things that can keep them from falling through the cracks if their dad isn't there. And consistency, uh, being real, as you said, being authentic, uh, 
But just being consistently involved and being there, you know, that right there lets them know, you know, that you really do care. And that's what it is that they need to know. And there's so much more that we can't talk about. We've run out of time. But I would also add to something that you're saying, you'll see, is that I think we have to be patient, too, with ourselves. Because sometimes we want instant results. That's right. And we move into young people's lives. We want them to turn around right away, mm -hmm. not recognizing that they have a long history of the things that you said. That's Distrust. Right inconsistency, dishonesty, you know, who can I really believe in? Who's really got my back? Who's going to be my cheerleader? Who's going to advocate for me? And sometimes it takes time to do that. And it takes time with no guarantee that the outcome is going to be what That's you right. want it to be. Right. Right. And I think we've got to be patient in that process and understand that there, everything's not going to result in a success. But it doesn't mean we should not stop trying. That's right. That's right. And that we should not make the commitment that you're talking about. L.C. Smith is the executive director of Our Fathers Mad Real Fathers Making a Difference. Thank you for being here with us today and expanding our understanding of this whole challenge of fatherhood in society today. Thank you, sir. I enjoyed the conversation. All right. Melvin Poplar, he is the first recipient of the Our Fathers Mad Father of the Year Award. Thank you for being here and sharing your unique perspective as well. Thank you for having me. We want to thank you for being a part of our conversation today, and we hope that you've learned a little bit more about some of what's going on with our young people in society today, and even across generations, because i got to tell you, there's some old cats out there that still haven't figured it out. They're still, with some, they're still dealing with some of the hurts and the injuries that they've experienced over a lifetime of distrust and abuse and um, inconsistency, and they're still looking for it at 40 and 50 and 60. That's just keeping it real, folks. That's what we're dealing with in our society today. And so we hope that you've learned a little bit more about this. We hope that you'll get in touch with LC. He's got volunteer opportunities, sponsorship opportunities. It's 501. And certainly would love somebody to come alongside him to say, hey, brother, I got some resources. I want to get in the game with you. We hope that you will like our Facebook page, Impact with Kenny Anderson, for a video of the show that you're watching right now. We hope that you'll share it, and we also hope that you will check out the behind-the-scenes images of our show today. I'm Kenny Anderson. It's always delighted that you've taken time to be with us. Until the next time, have a great day.